at 12 p.m. on TV1. DJ Cell TV, home of rugby league. Dial star 515 hash to subscribe. <laughs> Welcome to the news update. Foreign Affairs Minister Justin Kichenko says removing guns from PNG is not hard and does not require rocket scientists to do it. However, Kichenko also said the government is waiting on the UN organization to give them a full report of their findings as well as recommendations on how the government can best achieve effective reduction of gun violence. Representing the Prime Minister, Kichenko was addressing participants at the opening of the National Workshop on Coordination Mechanisms and Comprehensive National Strategy on Small Arms Control last week in Port Moresby. He called for immediate outcomes and actions on the growing issue of gun-related violence and affirmed that there was political will from the government for action. multifaceted we need to address small arms issues in an initiative integrated a multi-dimensional approach and as part of a wider as part of a wider development plan evidence shows that armed violence impacts women men girls boys differently BSP has resumed operations in Pogara after a year-long closure due to security concerns. Daniel Font, BSP's Group General Manager Retail, highlighted the economic importance of the move, emphasizing the significance of the Pogara gold mine in driving growth. The Pogara branch now offers essential services including ATMs, FPOS merchants and an agent. Font urged community leaders to ensure the safety safety of staff and facilities. Following the closure, customers had to travel to Wabeg for banking services, but BSP's presence across the Enga province includes ATMs, FBOS facilities and agents. Overall, BSP operates over 120 branches in the Pacific, with more than 80 in PNG alone. The coffee industry corporation's PNG Agriculture Commercialization Diversification Project has sent its quality control officer in Ostum to Sydney, Australia, recently to undergo various exams to meet the requirements of the Coffee Quality Institute in order to pass and renew his Q grader license. Inos Doom acknowledged the support of PACD through CIC to be able to undertake the exams in Australia to attain his Q grader certificate and above all to be able to assess quality of coffee with recognition from the CQI. CIC Chief Operations Officer Stephen Tumai said the training is the only internationally recognized certificate system for Arabica cuppers for specialty coffee by the CQI in the United States. To my acknowledge the timely support by PACD and congratulated Doom for this achievement. An Orthodox bishop was attacked with a knife during a church service last night in what police have declared a terrorist act. A 16-year-old boy has been arrested and is in police custody. 
Essentially, last night, the bishop was giving a sermon, and during this, that was all live streamed, a 15 year old boy allegedly lunged forward and stabbed him. Other churchgoers then rushed to his defense to try and help him, to try and hold the boy back. They were injured in the process, and now three people are in hospital, including the bishop, because of this attack. Uh, two of those are police officers who were then injured in riots that broke out outside. We know that here at the church, Church. There were hundreds of people who were angry by this stabbing and they then took to the streets and started jumping up and down on police cars, throwing objects at each other. And here this morning you can really see the what's left of all of these fights that happened last night. There's shattered rocks on the ground, cars with smashed glass. We know that there were up to 100 police officers who attended here last night, including more than 30 to 40 police cars. Many were so damaged that they had to be towed away. So the police response to this was huge. And we also know that emergency service workers, paramedics who attended the scene had to hide inside the church because they feared for their life. Now, speaking to community members here today, they say that they are absolutely shocked that this has happened in their neighbourhood. Many woke to the sounds of smashing rocks and cars last night, and I can't imagine how scary that would have been for them. Well, they were saying that the bishop is is a much loved member of this community and that many people were shocked to hear that this had happened and now of course with it being declared a terrorist attack that news too is just reverberating throughout the community and people are still waking up to this news and trying to come to terms with what's happened here in their neighborhood the bishop remains in hospital in a serious but stable condition and we also know that there were several other people who were injured too in these riots now the premier and and police commissioner have both said that they do not, uh, that they condemn these attacks, that Australians should not be uh, using, doing tit for tat attacks like this, and that there is plenty of vision that was taken overnight, and we've played some of that for you. So they will be looking for those offenders that damaged property, that injured people, injured police officers. One police officer had a brick thrown at their face, another police officer sustained injuries to their face and their legs. So it was quite the intense scene here last night and quite scary for people living in and around this neighbourhood. It's quite a quiet neighbourhood here. 14 pro-Palestinian activists have been arrested after widespread traffic disruptions in Melbourne. Hundreds marched through the CBD while others stopped traffic on major roads as part of an international movement to blockade key sites in support of Palestinians in Gaza. Major transport routes in Port Melbourne. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Pro-Palestinian protesters are arrested one by one, pulled off the road, free, free Palestine, and taken away by dozens of waiting police as traffic banked up. I had to call my manager to say, well, I can't get to the office. Pretty frustrated. I don't know what they're bloody up to. Across the city, pro-Palestinian activists ramped up their protests, <laughs> blocking the freeway exit onto Hoddle Street. Free, free, free Palestine and staging lions on major city streets. Two people were also arrested after allegedly tampering with traffic lights at a busy intersection in Carlton. We would um, support the right of people to protest their views peacefully and respectfully, uh, but not to disrupt the lives of other Victorians. We are sorry that you've experienced 15 to 30 minutes of delay, but it is really nothing compared to the 35,000 lives that were lost in Gaza so far. On the steps of Parliament, protesters called on the state government to sever its ties to Israel-based weapons manufacturer Elbit Systems. As hundreds more rallied outside of other businesses, including Boeing, Dandenong manufacturer A.W. Bell and BP. Rallies like this one outside of oil and gas giant BP have taken place across the city as part of a global movement to cause economic disruption and shut down transport and traffic. Organisers have pledged to continue if their demands are not met. The cries of the people are not being heard and therefore we are hitting them where it hurts, which is in their pockets. More than two dozen cities across the world are also expected to take part. 
A former CFS volunteer firefighter who deliberately lit several bushfires in the Adelaide Hills has been sentenced to more than a decade in jail. 64-year-old Gregory John McGannon lit fires on a day of extreme heat three years ago, destroying two houses. Gregory McGannon, intoxicated and caught deliberately lighting seven bushfires in the Adelaide Hills in 2021. I didn't light anything. It was a day of extreme heat with a total fire ban. More than 2,000 firefighters fought to contain the blazes, which ultimately scorched thousands of hectares of land, destroying two homes, injuring and killing countless wildlife and livestock. The former volunteer firefighter of 30 years was also found guilty of driving dangerously to escape police. Today, Judge Emily Telfer handed down a 13-year sentence with a concurrent additional 12 months for the driving offence, backdated to his arrest in January 2021. Outside South Australia's District Court, relieved victims. It will keep the community safe. Um, and everyone in the Adelaide Hills and be a deterrent. You know, this will bring some closure to the community, but rebuilding goes on. And um, Mr McGannon will have another nine years to contemplate the consequences of his actions. Inter Selick said there'd been a lasting impact on the community and ongoing efforts to repair the damage. You know, I just think he's got off lightly because he doesn't have to do the hard physical work that the rest of the community has put in. Judge Telfer reflected on victim impact statements, including from a couple whose children were forced to shelter in a wine cellar on their property as their parents fought the fire. For hours, those children did not know if their parents were dead or alive. When the children emerged from their hiding place, they saw that their world had been destroyed. Their two children have continuing trauma from what they have endured. Victims wiped away tears as they listened to Judge Telfer read out the sentence. McGannon, appearing via video link, sat quietly with his head down. McGannon will be eligible to apply for parole in 2030. PNG bounced back on feet to victory, beating American Samoa three points to one at the OFC Under-16 Men's Championship 2024, qualifying in Tonga this morning. American Samoa right from the whistle made their intent clear, firing shots at will, but a strong PNG defense kept the Samoan boys at bay. But against the run of play, it was Papua New Guinea that landed the first blow. Lightning striker Israel Ure picked up the ball just beyond the halfway line and made a brilliant run into the box into the sixth minute of play. Ure was the master of the day, recording another goal in the 16th minute. The rest of the first half was intense, with PNG leading two points to nil. Both teams' tactics were obvious, up with pace and defense. It was working for PNG. Approaching the halftime, Dangerman Ure tapped it home for his hat-trick. American Samoa started to assert their dominance in the final stages with one goal. However, PNG remained staunch in defense as they held on to claim victory. A national record for Adrian Monaghi in the 100-metre hurdles was the highlight of the weekend for Papua New Guinea at the Australian National Championships in Adelaide. Running in the second of three heats, Monaghi ran a very fluent race without touching any hurdles and smashed her personal best time of 13.71 seconds with a new PNG record time of 13.46. Edwin Monaghi has set a new national record at the Australian National Championships in Adelaide, running 13.46 seconds. The previous record of 13.52 seconds was set by Sharon Quarula in California in the lead-up to the 2015 Pacific Games. Monaghi went on to finish sixth in the final with a time of 13.65 seconds. Pais Whistle also had a very good championship navigating successfully the preliminary round and round one proper in the 100 meters. He then set a personal best of 10.61 seconds in the semi-final and looked very good throughout. Whistle has been explosive out of the blocks and running the first two thirds of the race really well and will now focus on improving the final third of his race as he prepares for the Oceania Championships. 
Riley Kapanen just missed out on the long jump final after her final jump, which was thought to be well over six metres, was ruled a foul by the tiniest margins. Kapanen is now focused on the Oceania Championships. Sharon Tarko threw season's best 44.75 metres in the javelin and scholar Sika Herman improved her 1500 metre personal best a full two seconds. However, she wasn't able to hold on her form over the last 200 metres of her 800 metre race and clock two minutes 15 seconds. Her results a reflection of her training in lay which was more suited to her 1500 metre and believed she needs more speed work to improve her lentic tolerance. William Pegar 400 metre hurdles, Herman and Aquila Turalom 3000 stable chase all competed well and have gained valuable competition experience in Australia since the Pacific Games. As that experience president Tony Green said he was very satisfied with the overall results and thanked sponsors Kumul Mineral Holdings, PNG Air and Team PNG sponsor Kumul Consolidated Holdings for their support. Terry Longwood, TV1 Sports. And that ends our news updates for today. Join us at 6 p.m. for our main bulletin.